It's a bit ironic that my path to motherhood started with a redheaded orphan and the worst mother figure of all time. 1990, Dock Street Theater, the musical, Annie. I was just in the chorus, but like Annie, I was a redhead singing my way through life, always believing that the sun will come up tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. I was also a little like Miss Hannigan, single, childless, aging, desperate for a man. <laughs> little did I know that one night in the audience, a member took note of the spunky girl in the chorus. Three years later, that audience member became my husband. Ours was not a traditional pairing. He was a cynic, 15 years my senior, with three children. I was an optimistic 29-year-old drama queen with no clue. <laughs> we made it work. I was a good stepmom, not a Miss Hannigan. I hoped one day I would also be a good mom to a child of my own. But the one thing I didn't want to do before I got married was the one thing I couldn't seem to do after. Finally, after many hopes and prayers and years of fertility treatments, I got pregnant. At 37, another redheaded girl changed my life. Forever. The night our daughter was born was one of my happiest. I had a baby. I could watch her and touch her and see her breathing. It was also one of the scariest. Oh my God, I have a baby? I have to watch her and touch her and make sure she's breathing. Before my daughter's birth, I knew I was prepared to be a good mom. But as the nurse wheeled me and my newborn to the waiting car, I panicked. Are you really going to let me leave here with this baby? I have no idea what I'm doing. She laughed and put me in the car anyway. Fortunately, my husband was a veteran father. And I figured out the mom role as I went along. I didn't expect it to be easy. But I did expect to be happier. I spent a lot of time worrying and getting frustrated. I chalked it up to busyness, baby blues, being a human pacifier. But my family grew concerned about me. Little Miss Happy-Go-Lucky wasn't. Then I got pregnant again, this time without fertility treatments. This was a big surprise. So was the miscarriage. Losing a baby is sad, but I wasn't just sad. I was despondent, guilt-ridden, angry. I thought I was a failure, all wrong for this mom role. See, I was on a descent into darkness that had begun so gradually and so subtly that I didn't realize what was happening. My husband, my mom, my aunts, they all saw it. They told me I wasn't myself. They asked me what was wrong, how they could help. I lied, said I was fine. I tried to smile more, act like my old self, feel happier. But I felt like I was stuck in a hard knock life like the sun was setting and might not come up tomorrow. One day I almost let the curtain drop on tomorrow altogether. I was exhausted and overwhelmed. My toddler was cranky, crying, completely out of control. She wouldn't calm down or listen to me. I didn't feel motherly. I felt rage. I grabbed her. I carried her to her room and I put her forcefully in bed, screaming at her to shut up or else. My daughter looked at me, her eyes wide with terror, her cry, fearful, not defiant. My whole body was shaking with adrenaline and fury and fear. I wasn't a good mom. I was a monster. I ran out of her room. What was the matter with me? My anger was totally out of control. What if this happened again? I had read stories about things like this, and I didn't want my daughter to be a statistic. I started to wonder if she would be better off without me. She found me crying in the hallway and crawled into my lap. She put her head on my chest, and I felt her chubby hand go up into my hair. She trusted me. She needed me. She wanted me. That red-headed girl changed my life again. She showed me a ray of sunlight that gave me hope for tomorrow. I didn't think it was possible for someone like me to succumb to something like depression. 
But after that, I had to admit it. Only then did I see that depression was the monster, not me. I opened up, I went into counseling, and I took medication. I held on to my daughter for dear life, and I held on to life for my daughter. It hasn't been easy. The monster still creeps in at times. Sometimes I don't even realize it until my husband says, you're going to a dark place. Please talk to me. But slowly I have recovered my health, my optimism, my hope for today and tomorrow. In 2012, I played Miss Hannigan in a revival of Annie. My husband was in it, and our daughter played one of the orphans. I had so much fun screaming and yelling at the little girls because it was just an act. My daughter is not an orphan, and I am not a monster. I am not wrong for this role. I am a good mom. It's hard to admit publicly that I suffer from depression, that I could ever feel that kind of rage or helplessness, but it's worth it if it helps one person, if one precious, struggling mother can find a reason to hang on, come what may, and sees that tomorrow really is only a day away. Thank you.